Hi, today I will explain about the surface sensitivity and specificity. So, what do we really mean by surface sensitivity and specificity? The surface sensitivity technique is more sensitive to those atoms which are located near the surface than it is to atoms in the bulk which are well away from the surface. And the important thing is that a truly surface specific technique should only give signals due to atoms in the surface region. However, some general sensitivity problems occur to all forms of spectroscopy. Firstly, it is possible whether to detect the desired signal above the noise level. The contribution of the noise are the concentration of the substrate is very low and the contamination occur on the surface, so that it is cannot detect the signals. The other problem is the signal is under minimum detection level, MDL. So, in order to get the signal, it must higher than minimum detection level. And lastly, it is difficult to distinguish between the signals from the surface and the bulk of the sample. In principle, there are two ways around these problems. First, to ensure that the surface is distinguishable from the comparable bulk signal, the detection system has sufficient di dynamic range to detect very small signals in the presence of neighboring less signals. Second, to ensure that the bulk signal is small compared to the surface signal, it is later approach which is used by the majority of surface spectroscopic techniques. Such techniques can then be said to be surface sensitive. So, in order to achieve surface sensitivity, this makes use of the special properties of low energy electron. It is an approach employed in common surface spectroscopy techniques such as object electron spectroscopy, AES, and X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy, XPS. Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. Now, I will proceed with the object electron spectroscopy, or also can be called as AES. So, what is AES? Auger electron spectroscopy is a method used in determining the composition as well as the surface layers of a certain sample. It is completed by using few steps. The steps start with the ionization of a core electron. When an electron is excited by radiation or an accelerated particle, then it will not be at its original state. Shortly after, we undergo relaxation process where the excess energy is emitted and the highest electron moves to the vacuum spot. This excess energy is then can be transferred to another higher shared electron, causing it to leave the atom. The emitted electron is called the auger electron. Its energy is defined as the binding energy of the participating electron. Once the auger electron leaves the atom, it is then run into the spectroscopy to be analyzed. As you can see, this is the illustration of the instrumentation of auger electron spectroscopy. The sample, which is usually a solid compound, is run into the spectrometer. The sample is then moved through an electron gun or optical ion slot. This electron gun is comprised of an ion beam that sputters the sample surface. The electron analyzer is usually a cylindrical mirror analyzer. As for the detector of an electron multiplier, it consists of diodes that are connected to a resistor. In this step, the second electron are produced. The data is processed by displaying different peaks of certain surface. In this whole world, Nothing is perfect. Every machine has their own pros and cons. As for AES, the first advantage is that AES is becoming simpler to be used. The analyzer have high sensitivity when chemical analyzer are run. For a machine, the more sensitive it is, the, be the better the result would be. At the same time, the output rates are high during data processing. 
there is also high spatial resolution on a sighted background being focused on the probes. As for the disadvantages, AES may give surface damage on the sample. There is also more work should be done to require a precise data. It also have a normal instead of high sensitivity. Plus, the final disadvantage is that AES is sometimes complicated to study when the surfaces are being charged. explain about the X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy, XPS. This is X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy as shown in the video. So, what is photo, what is X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy? X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy is surface sensitive spectroscopic technique to analyze the structure of atom and get the information about electronic structure as well as ionization energy. With this technique also, we are obtain information about chemical composition of the material. It is based on the photoelectric effect which was described by Einstein in 1905. So, how does XPS works? Let's say we have silicon dioxide sample and display in high vacuum. Then, we focus an X-ray on it. This will eject the electrons after the sample as shown with the blue arrows. These so-called photoemitted electrons. These electrons come through to the electron detector. What the detector does is count the electrons and measure the kinetic energy of those electrons. Now, finally, this energy is represented in the spectrum where each of electron energy informs us about the element in this probe. XPS also has some advantages and disadvantages. The first advantage is non-destructive method as well as surface sensitive method so it is very helpful to do an elemental analysis another advantage is provide a quantitative measurement and also provide an information about chemical bonding and chemical composition of a molecules on the other hand SPS also has this advantage as well first of all it is very expensive this technique required a high vacuum when operate. Next, it, this, this method is slow processing, so it takes time to provide a result. And lastly, it detects all elements with atomic number of 3 and above, so it is difficult to detect hydrogen and helium elements. So, that's all about SPS. What is vibrational spectroscopy? What it is a method for characterizing and identifying compounds. It is also a non-destructive identification method available that measures the vibrational energy in a compound. Each chemical bond has a unique vibrational energy. Due to this unique vibrational energy, each compound will have a unique fingerprint for the output identifying the its strengths at specific vibrations. The fingerprints can be used to determine compound structure, identify and characterize compounds and then identify impurities. There are two types of vibrational spectroscopy. One is the infrared spectroscopy and another one is the Raman spectroscopy. So this is the illustration on how the infrared spectroscopy works. The infrared spectrum of a sample is recorded by passing a beam of infrared light through the sample. When the frequency of the infrared is the same as the vibrational frequency of a bond or collection of bonds, absorption occurs. 
Examination of transmitted light reveals how much energy was absorbed at each frequency or wavelength. Next, we go to the introduction of Raman spectroscopy. Raman spectroscopy is based on the scattering of light by molecules. Each molecule has a different ways of eye brain and this change depending on its shape. They are associated with particular energy levels. The molecule can only exist long term in one of these set modes. Here we have a metalline group which has six different vibrational modes which it can occupy. When light interacts with molecule, it receives energy from an incoming packet of energy known as photon which promotes it to a higher energy. If this does not match one of the modes of the molecule, it immediately goes back down to release the photon. Here one of three things can happen. In the majority of cases, the molecule relaxes back to its original vibrational energy state which is known as scattering but one in every million scattering event is inelastic. This means that the molecule spontaneously relaxes to a vibrational energy state which is higher or lower than the original state. By measuring the difference in energy of the outgoing photon compared to the incoming photon, the energy molecule can be determined. The energy levels are unique to each molecule and so that they act as a fingerprint allowing the molecule in a sample to be determined. Okay, now let us proceed with the secondary ion mass spectroscopy. So, what is secondary ion mass spectroscopy? Secondary ion mass spectroscopy or SIMS is a technique used to analyze the composition of solid surfaces and thin films by sputtering the surface of a specimen with a focused primary ion beam, then collecting and analyzing the ejected secondary ion. Why do we need to measure the mass or charge ratio of the secondary ion? It is actually to determine the elemental, isotropic and molecular composition of the surface to a depth of 1 until 2 nanometer. Then we will proceed with the fundamental principles of secondary mass spectroscopy. The interaction of primary ion beam with the sample which is under vacuum provides sufficient energy to ionize many elements. If the primary beam is composed of positively charged ions, the resultant ionization favor for the action of negative charged ion. Thus, if primary beam composed of negative ions, it will favor the generation of positive ion. Although most atoms and molecules are removed from the sample by the interaction of the primary beams and the sample surface are natural, a percentage of these are ionized. Mass spectrometer is used to accelerate, focus and analyze these ions. The process allows us to observe the spectrum produced. Now let's look closer to what actually happened at the surface of the sample. This is the visualization on how the primary ion strike on the sample and releasing the secondary ion. After this sputtering process, the ion generated is then subsequently transmitted within a high vacuum environment to a mass spectrometer. Then the result can be observed by plotting the graph. Based on this illustration beside, on the right side of the sample, it shows that different layer or different type of ion can produce different spectrums. 